Are we recording? Yes, we're recording. To be told, you're having fun, so I want to lock the jukebox and do a solo baby. Um, the whole thing, as you can see, it's in what you'd imagine, that kind of a state to be that old and all the rest of it. And there's the water pump and we're going to have a look at this horrible engine destroying cavitation. I started doing, um, well I've got some pictures, I'll just show you one or two now. This is just the setup, it will go through it in the full video about it. But this is the setup um, where you can see I've got all these different little jars. They're all watertight, they're all sealed with tape, they're all dated. They have magnesium, steel and aluminium in. They have aluminium and steel and magnesium, all from bike engines. So this isn't just random alloys. This is um, the Suzuki magnesium clutch case. This is uh, magnesium from a piston, uh, aluminium from a piston. Yes, that's not the exact alloy they use in casings. I have some casings kicking around by the piston. It is easy just to chop up. And the steel that I've used is actually a two-stroke conrod. Um, that's been chopped up into bits. Now, all the bits are different weights, different sizes, different surface areas and all the rest of it. I've cleaned up the surfaces so they are generally bare metal. The cool thing about the Conrod is that it has a copper coating on. I've scratched some of the copper coating on, but there's always exposed steel as well. We're going to put, and all three of them have put together, because in your system, we are talking about corrosion as well, not just cavitation, but in your system, um, you know, you don't just have... so. To put, to put it in a different perspective, we could have jars like this um, that have a thread like that and then they have a lid. So we're sealing this from the outside world. There is fluid and there is air. So there's air in here and then there's the fluid and there's, I think I've done eight, something shit like that maybe nine there's a control so there's an empty jar with the same pieces from the same components just chucked in there now all three so you've got steel magnesium and aluminium uh, so that's alley that's magnesium and that's steel they are all together in the same pot simply because your um, system is like that you know you don't just have uh, you have steel springs for your thermostat and the steel pressings for your thermostat. You have your, you know, your magnesium covers or your entire magnesium engine. Or you have aluminium in there as your radiator and some of your water pump and all the rest of it. You know, this is predominantly aluminium. You know what I mean? So, um, but they're all directly connected to each other. That's what you've got to think of. We could put these in pots like that and then just have magnesium but the problem with that is that's just how magnesium reacts to the substance that it's in if you have all these different metals then you're you know you're kind of creating like a a pile you know in a sense now they're not all sat on top of each other they are all separate because generally they are separate but i'll give them a, a mix and a stir as this experiment goes on now this experiment is going to go on for a year um, and you might think, oh, fucking hell, I want results now. Well, you're not going to get them. <laughs> you know, we need to do this over a decent time. But how am I actually doing this? Well, what I'm doing is, is I've got some very, very accurate scales. And I have some test samples, so some known weights, basically. Um, some standards. I weighed the 100, the 100 gram one and the 200, the 50, the 100 and the 200. So the 50 gram, the 100 gram and the 200 gram weights, I weighed all of them and calibrated the uh, scales to that so they all passed that. Then what I did was, is every single piece of uh, just say like magnesium or whatever, aluminium um, and so on, steel, were all weighed. Now that's important. They are dry and weighed. So what we're going to do is every month, so you'll have there their weight or their mass should we say and we'll just have months down here and every month for each sample in each liquid I am going to weigh and people say stop picking nose I'm not picking my nose I'm rubbing my nose because I've got a fucking hair that's tickling the shit out of me 
Um, but every month I am going to measure them weight wise and then we should get a plot like so or like so depending depending what happens like that you know what I mean this has kind of turned into a double video <laughs> but anyway yes yeah, so that's the experiment let's get back to the video so yeah that so that's what I'm gonna do uh, basically just measure the masses of them if we take them out of the solution and then dry them now these are not going through thermal uh, thermal cycles thermal cycles is a hard thing to do it's something I wish to do as well I'd love to do that but the problem is is you've got water in a container how much do we thermal cycle it well it means then I have to get into pressure stuff which means I have to set up a pressure experiment it uh, means the whole experiment will have to be pressure based as well uh, you know what I mean so yeah we're not doing exactly representative but we are just looking at the difference between and we should this is the thing we should see a difference the temperature shouldn't really make that the temperature change just say if this was our curve the temperature came the temperature would do that to it so it'd give it a plus minus element you know with some error bars kind of thing you know like that that's what it would do it would you know it would um it, it, well in this case it decrease the weight it would it, you know increase the the reaction however we should see every every month you should you know we'll have a point and over it and i'll do a video of how far we've got in six months and then i'll do a video the final video after a year and even then i might just then button it up and just leave it for two or three years and just see what happens but really i think we should see something by six months um, the differences you know what i mean because them scales go down to micrograms um you know and things that weigh up in the region of between three and eight grams or three and ten grams micrograms really does give us a uh, you know we're getting into less than one percent and all the rest of it well well below that but um yeah so we should see a difference why should we see a difference you know so if you're following along but you're like right i get this but why does the weight make a difference um you have a metal and it weighs eight 0.615 grams something like that you know what I mean and if it oxidizes certain things should happen either bits of it fall off or the whole thing gets heavier because you are now adding oxygens to the whole system we can also see visually as well that's the other thing you know two things are going to happen it's either going to get heavier or it's going to get lighter if it stays the same then you know if nothing changes then nothing generally has happened the chances of it reacting in some way and that you know it loses and gains the exact amount isn't going to happen you know what i mean so we should see a change now based on all this let's talk about predictions so what have i done as samples i've done evans I've done, I can't remember now, uh, water plus Evans, 50-50, and that was measured, that was by weight, uh, and which is not far off volume, uh, because I can measure weight better than I can volume with the stuff I've got. Uh, what else did we use? We used Coma, which is the first stuff we tested Evans against. I used, uh, what's it called, Prestone. Uh, then we used uh, propylene and then I used um, propylene and water no no I didn't what did I do can I fucking did now Evans Evans and water coma coma prestone propylene um, oh it was Max juice that was the one Max juice, what was the other one? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, there's more than that. It's like eight. What did I use? So I used DI water, let's just uh, let's um Oh what else did I fucking use? 
I did something else. I'll, 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 like I say, this isn't the full video where you get to see what's going on. The full video, this is the explanation video-ish. The full video is when in six months time when I unveil all this stuff and we actually find out what the weight differences are. I'll go through the explanation there. But uh, the, it's DI water that's used for water for the mixes. Oh, that was it, dickhead. Water. <laughs> Just 100% water, which was DI water. That's 100%. So Matt's juice is basically just propylene, it's 50-50 propylene and water, that's all it is, no inhibitors now or whatever. So what do I think will uh, win this, uh, who do I think will win in a sense, which will be the best? The best out of all these will be Evans and propylene, that's what I believe. More Evans, so put a bigger tick for Evans. Why? Because water does, you know, possess free oxygen and a lot of these metals, the way they corrode is oxidisation. Steel, you know, iron oxidises, becomes iron oxide. Um, aluminium oxidises and becomes aluminium oxide. And magnesium oxidises and becomes magnesium oxide, really strangely. Um, so, the propylene has no water in it. It's the stuff that I got, the medical grade stuff. So proper, so you know, 99.999%. It's probably drew, drawn in a bit of moisture from the air um, because that's what glycols generally do. So Evans will have about the same probably. Uh, that's why they're sealed. That's why they've got tape and they're dated so you can't tamper with them and what have you. Also, we can see that they haven't been tampered with. Um, so yeah, I reckon Evans will win because it has the it has the plus of the inhibitors versus the propylene. Next. Uh, but these two will be on par. There will, there will be very little difference between these two. Then it'll be these three, because these are antifreezes. These are all 50-50s and match juice as well. All these, this one, this one, this one, this one, will be all very close. That's my prediction. Because they are 50% glycols, which would be just as good as the propylene on its own, but they have the rust inhibitors in, but they also do have that oxygen at uh, water element with the free oxygen and all the rest of it. You know, that is just the way it goes. And obviously the shittest one will be water. This will be shite. Of course, you know, I'm not arguing this case. What I want to prove in, a, uh, well, what I want to see, if anything, is the magnesium. You know, um, People have banged on about a lot of things about uh, propylene glycol and ethylene glycol. Well, um, propylene just straight up is what I've got, but the Prestone and the Coma versus the Evans 50-50, so this, you know, it says on it, contains ethylene glycol. Evans has ethylene glycol in it. You know, does it say it on it? I don't think it says it on it. Um, but it does in the technical data sheets, you know what I mean? Um, and this has ethylene glycol in it, the coma has ethylene glycol and propylene, they're all mixes um, and they have you know these inhibitors like um, sodium nitrate and stuff like that I think it's nit sodium nitrate, Dave will straighten me out <laughs> but yeah that's my prediction you know the Evans and the propylene just straight up glycols will probably win but we'll see that's my prediction right now from what the, my limited chemistry knowledge. Any road, hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.